Gelenia, uh, which is uh, also called Fingolimid, uh, is a sphingosine 1-phosphate inhibitor. In English, uh, it is a medication that alters the ability of immune cells to be released from the places where immune cells are um, either produced or modified in the body. Typically, these are the lymph nodes um, or a gland called the thymus. Uh, the uh, fingolimid acts by keeping immune cells in these regions of the body, and in other words, reducing them in the general circulation. When, immu when immune cells are not in the bloodstream, then they also do not gain access into the brain, optic nerve, or spinal cord. And so one of the main reasons that uh, fingolimid is thought to work is because it effectively reduces the uh, number of immune cells that can gain access into the brain where they can then cause symptoms related to multiple sclerosis. There may be other effects. It is thought that this medication may also act within the central nervous system in such a way as to potentially protect the brain from MS-related attacks, although this part of the benefit of the medication is still under active study. So fingolimid was approved uh, as a means of treating relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis uh, in adults uh, with, uh, with multiple sclerosis. And then a study called the Paradigms uh, study uh, was the first ever completed large study uh, uh, in terms of a clinical trial for pediatric MS patients. In this clinical trial, uh, uh, just over 200 uh, pediatric MS patients were randomized. In other words, they were, uh, they were given either fingolimid as the real tablet uh, and a weekly injection of what we call a placebo or a not real therapy, or they were randomized to the other side of the study, which was that they received a tablet that did not contain any active medication and received a weekly injection of interferon beta 1a. These two groups of patients were then uh, followed for um, up to two years uh, and were evaluated on uh, the frequency of clinical relapses the changes on brain MRI in terms of the number of new spots or lesions in the brain, and their changes in brain volume. Pediatric patients receiving fingolimid had an 82% relative reduction in the frequency of their clinical relapses compared to the children that were receiving the interferon beta-1A product. MRI findings showed that children receiving the fingolimid uh, had fewer new MRI lesions, uh, in fact, they had a 66% reduction in the new uh, frequency of new lesions. The volume of new spots in the brain was reduced in the fingolimid arm as compared to the interferon beta-1a arm. And when we looked at the change in the size of the brain during the course of the study, the patients receiving the interferon beta-1a lost more brain volume than did the children in the fingolimid arm. There was also a uh, reduction in any likelihood of physical disability. Uh, more likely to, the, sorry, the patients in the fingolimid arm were less likely to experience any physical disability, although neither of the groups actually had any major disability during the study, which is consistent with the fact that pediatric MS patients are not disabled. Overall, however, the, the study clearly showed that fingolimid was superior in its ability to reduce relapse rate. Uh, and in its ability to control the MRI evidence of active disease. Fingolimid is given as a tablet uh, in a single daily dose, uh, and patients um, have to be monitored very carefully on the first time they receive it, because uh, a small percentage of patients, the first time they receive this medication, may experience a lowering of their heart rate, uh, which is uh, something that can be well taken care of in a monitored or uh, uh, specialized location, but should not be given for the first time at home. That first dose effect is truly a first dose effect, uh, and once patients have been monitored for their initial tablet, um, they are then safe to receive the medication uh, at home. Fingolimid is also associated with other uh, risks that we need to monitor. So all patients need to have their skin carefully evaluated because there is a small increased risk of melanoma. This is probably not nearly as big a concern in the pediatric age group, uh, but nonetheless, careful skin examinations and routine skin surveillance is part of using this medication. Fingolimid has also been associated uh, with potential disruption of the retina or the back part of the eye. 
This is a reversible problem if it's captured uh, promptly, but all patients have to have an eye exam before they start treatment and have to have regular ophthalmology examinations. With all of that being said, patients receiving fingolimid feel well. Uh, they do not feel nauseous or sick, typically, um, when taking this medication, although a small proportion of patients do report having an increased frequency of headache. Uh, fingolimid will reduce your circulating immune cell count, uh, which is part of how it works, but that does require that the, your physician monitor uh, the blood count uh, to make sure that the uh, numbers do not go too low. Uh, there is a small risk of infection when your blood counts are low, and so patients on fingolimid who experience fever or any significant illness do need to be examined by their physician. Uh, so when considering treatment options, for a child or a teenager living with multiple sclerosis, we often use the phrasing first and second line uh, therapies. First line therapies are treatments that uh, are given as the initial or very first treatment. Uh, and in the past, prior to the paradigms study of fingolimid, um, all of the treatments we used were prescribed using uh, what we call off-label, uh, which means that there were no clinical trials and no FDA formal approval of medications for pediatric onset MS, and consequently, um, physicians used uh, the uh, treatments uh, uh, for pediatric patients following generally the guidelines used for adult onset multiple sclerosis. So the initial uh, first-line therapies that many of us have used to treat our pediatric patients would be to use one of the three available interferon preparations or glutiram or acetate. Uh, and then if these did not appear to be adequately effective, we would have escalated or increased to a, a new therapy that was thought to be more potent or more, uh, more powerful. The Paradigms study of oral fingolimid, because it is FDA approved now for pediatric patients, was approved um, as a first-line therapy as well which means that now when we um, treat our pediatric patients, we have the option of using fingolimid with approval, which does help when you are prescribing it uh, in terms of uh, being able to uh, obtain insurance authorizations in the United States, um, which is a very important aspect of obtaining uh, particular therapies. That does not mean that every single child needs to start their MS journey on fingolimid. The treatment choice is individualized, um, and uh, each patient, their family, and their team need to decide which treatment is optimal for that particular person. When treating a patient with multiple sclerosis, it's important to remember that treatment uh, only works if you take it. So adherence is critical. Uh, when we talk to our patients, uh, we discuss at every visit whether they've been taking the medication, are they taking it reliably. Of course, we need to make sure they're taking it correctly. Uh, and it's important for adherence or the ability of somebody to keep taking their medication that they feel comfortable, that they can talk to their physician about whether or not they want to stay on that particular medication, and if not, why not. In addition to adhering to medication, we also have to always evaluate whether a given medication remains the right choice for that person. A medication may become less effective over time or may not be effective for a particular person at all in which case if they continue to have clinical relapses or if their MRI continues to show new areas uh, where the immune system has attacked in the brain, optic nerves, or spine, the treating physician may make a decision with the patient and their family that it's time to switch to an alternate or different therapy. When you switch from one medication to another, it is either because the person doesn't want to take the medicine, uh, as I said at the beginning, because it's not as effective as we expect that medication to be, or in some cases because of uh, side effects. So some people will not tolerate a particular medication even if it's working uh, because either of uh, symptoms that they find troublesome or because of uh, laboratory tests or blood cell counts, for example, uh, that tell the treating physician that this person's body is not tolerating the medicine that they're on. Happily, we have many choices. And so uh, when we switch from one medication to another, it is a very careful decision made with the family and the patient uh, and their treating physician uh, and requires that when that switch is made that you think carefully about how long one needs to be off the first treatment before starting a second and to make sure that the choice of the new medication is prescribed with the same safety um, and monitoring uh, as we would want to have throughout the entire uh, disease course of a given individual. Thank you.
Thank you.